Hey everybody, uh, Bob Bowers here. Just wanted to uh, see if I can make a short video uh, in regards to how I spine test. And uh, I spent a lot of time on working with TAC-15, PSC TAC-15 crossbows and, uh, and their uh, arrows, which are uh, 26 and a quarter uh, TAC-15 shafts made uh, specifically by PSE for the TAC-15 and the only other shaft that I know that is available to shoot out of it is the Firenock uh, Airbolt uh, 2 and uh, several other models that he has that I think that you could shoot. Uh, anyway, I have a uh, Ram uh, Carbon QC era spine tester that I use which is excellent for testing the spine of each shaft and I do that on uh, every single shaft. But what I've found is that uh, sometimes I fletch them with that orientation. I always orient that spine on each one uh, by this whatever this indicator reads. And I find that sometimes a shaft just doesn't behave with that particular mark. So I came up with my own little device here that I'm just playing around with. It has to do with... Uh, if anybody's a golfer, you guys are familiar maybe with flatline oscillation and what they do to test a set of golf club shafts, carbon shafts, and they put a weight on the end and they laser test it. And this is basically the same version of that. It just made, uh, I've just made it to fit carbon air shafts. And so far, I've been testing it this year and coming out with uh, some really stellar results. Anyway, an example of that. What I'm speaking of is, is um, I can put this shaft on on the uh, RAM machine, and I can rotate it very slowly, and I I get a spine reading that uh, this would show the weak side of the of the uh, shaft, but um, I, I marked it up there on the very top. Then I took it off of uh, off of that machine. And I put it in my little device here that I've made, and I'll show you uh, the results. Now this would be um, exactly the same spine that I had on the very top dead center of the shaft here. And what I've done is I've just took uh, taken a couple of half-inch drill trucks and uh, incorporated... Um, one of the magnetic lasers on the end of it made a uh, had a, a device made here that holds the laser. It's perfectly concentric and true, so that it's read and center. And I hope you can see this red laser back here in the background on the wall. And I'm just using the wall as a good indicator. I don't have a graph or a set of lines that would show me exactly, but you can pretty much see it. And what you do uh, is, I need a device that releases this the same way every time. But regardless of that, that the shaft will seek its center if it is truly in line with the spine. So this would be an example of this particular shaft is set up right now with what I would have normally fletched it with with the RAM tool. And I'll show you if the, if the if it doesn't run true, then you'll find this to oscillate in a circle or an oval or anywhere but a straight line. So you give it a little tap, and as you can see, uh, it's trying to seek its center. It's it's showing it's got a, looks like it's going to have a flat line, but then as you watch it, eventually you see that it's fighting. It's not doing its job. It's You got a very distinct oval right there uh, coming all around to a full circle. So you're not able to get the spine by that particular point. Now, I've tested this particular one and I've determined that this is as close to the spine as I can find. So I'll take and hold that steady there for a second. Give it a little tap. And we'll watch. Same scenario. Now, as you can see, the line is going straighter and straighter and straighter. Now, it's, it, this one's leaning a little bit, but we'll keep watching. Eventually, it tries to seek its seek its center. As you can see, this one's not going in near as big a circle. 
as the others. But you can see how it is turned into a straight line. It's no longer in an oval. So it's trying to, to seek its perfect spine right there on top. And I'll show you another one real quick. This little device that I came up with is very crude, but um, it seems to be working. And once again, this one I've tested in March, so this is going to be where I would consider this, this shaft to be. See, it really seeks, a, see how straight the line is? That really wants to, that shaft wants to go right there and that, that, that up and down is right exactly where that spine is. Now, if you rotate that, here let's say 90 degrees, and do the same thing, and you're going to give it the time to, you know, start doing its thing, and as you can see, it immediately starts to wobble into a pretty bad arc. So now you all of a sudden you've got a real big circle. So um, this is uh, something I've been playing with, and so far it beats the RAM tester just by getting the true spine because this is a dynamic, um, you know, this is more of a static uh, type situation. This is a little bit more dynamic. It has to, by putting the weight on the end and holding the shaft just on the very end of it, it gives it a chance to bend. So with the shaft bending like it is, it tries to seek the, the exact dead spine that it's going to be up right on, you know, whether or not it's on the top or the side or whatever. As you rotate it, eventually you hit that sweet spot. And then if you can fletch your shaft so that that is the top dead center or six o'clock position, whichever, it doesn't make any difference, but you, or you, it doesn't, you can do it one o'clock, it doesn't matter. I like to do it top dead center, but um, what you're wanting to do is find that particular shaft, the spine, so that it, it's going to, what it's going to do is when you shoot it, it's going to bend in that particular direction every single time. So if you can put that bend at 6 o'clock or at 12 o'clock uh, on your rest, you should have the most accurate results. So that was just something I've been playing with. I want to show you guys, and uh, I'll try to update it as I get a little bit more uh, testing completed.